Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at how to communicate between directives using the uh, require method and a common controller. Uh, so, I've got a basic page wired up with Angular. Uh, I want to create a directive called car. And let's say the car is going to have a model, and this one is going to be model A. So, let's go ahead and start off our directive car. And of course, that's going to return an object, and we're going to restrict that in this case to an element. And then, uh, so in our linking whoa, link function scope element attributes, and we're going to say that the scope dot model equals attributes that model and there are templates we'll simply write that out uh, model model okay so let's try that out really quick there's our model a vehicle okay uh, we are going to nest a controller right here in the directive uh, so that we can share it with other directives uh, we, we could actually create this uh, outside of it we, we could have a you know, uh, dot controller, whatever, and then here we could just reference that controller, but I'm gonna make it right here in the uh, directive. And what we're gonna do is, so I wanna have some features, and I want those to be attributes that can modify the directive. So I want something like, uh, so this car has brakes and wheels. And then maybe I wanna have another one, a Model B, and that one's just got wheels, no brakes. Do not buy Model B. So what I'm gonna do down here is I'm gonna say scope.features equals, and that's gonna be an array. And so the first feature is it's a car. We know that. Now what I'm also gonna do, now that scope references the scope of the directive. Um, this references the controller itself. So I'm gonna have a this.add feature equals function. And this is how I'm gonna add new features from uh, additional directives. So it's going to take in a feature, and we're going to say scope dot features dot push uh, the feature, and then down here, let's say we are going to use an unordered list, and we'll put a repeater. So ng repeat equals feature in features, and then we'll just uh, I'll put that feature and then we'll close our list item. Okay, so let's just run this, make sure we haven't broken anything. Uh, it is a car and for some reason we're getting a second feature. Feature in features, there's the feature. Uh, you know what, I'm not gonna worry about it right now. Uh, okay, so you know what, that is bothering me. One second, uh, you know what it is. Uh, let me push this onto the other line, and you can see I wasn't closing my list item there, so there we go. We got model B. Oh, and you know what? We're going to add scope, and rather than completely isolating it with an empty object, we're going to use true, because that's going to allow it to do this communication that we want to happen. It can inherit uh, from either a parent or a child in our case. Uh, it, it really depends on how you set it up, but we want it to be able to communicate as a child or to a child. So if I reload that, now we've got our Model A as a car, our Model B as a car, and now we want to get these uh, uh, attribute directives working. So let's create our wheels one, since they both have wheels, which is nice, you know, to have wheels. And we build this up just like a regular directive uh, but one thing that's going to be different is obviously we're going to restrict to attribute in this case and now we're going to use this uh, method called require and what we're going to require is the car directive uh, this won't fire or basically the link function won't fire if the car directive isn't there and something else we're going to do a little bit different uh, whoops so we've got our scope element attributes and now we're also going to have this controller. We're going to call it car controller. And what it's doing is it's inheriting the controller from the car uh, directive. And I do believe that this is the proper syntax. It, it, it'll work without it. 
uh, and there's probably some more details in there that I should be aware of why it would some you know it'll work without it or with it but it seems to make sense to me that in this case we're saying that it is a child of what's above which is the car so it's a child of the car it requires the car let's get this comma in there and then what we can say down here is car controller dot add feature and we can pass in has wheels so let's take a look at that cool they both have wheels and now let's add one more for brakes and we'll say brakes, not breakers, brakes. Also requires the car and has brakes. So now uh, model A is a car, it has wheels and it has brakes. Model B is a car, it has wheels but no brakes. Uh, so there you go, that's a quick look at how to communicate between directives with a common controller, uh, you know, that's pretty handy. Uh, and just to show you really quick, what we could have done uh, is make this controller outside of controller. That's not that's not how we do a controller. Uh, sorry, car controller. There and there. Uh, did I do that right? I don't know. But the idea is that we could then just call it here. Car controller. You know, I think I seriously typo that. This is going to break. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Dot on that. Oh, you know what? That works. Okay, so the controller. Sorry, you know, I got my uh, outlining all messed up here. But the controller can be outside of the directive and then you can just inject it at the at the controller key in the directive object uh, so again that's you know how to communicate between directives with a common controller in angular js hope you guys enjoyed it have a good one